Welcome to Marketing and Mindset for Wellness Coaches, the podcast for health coaches and wellness entrepreneurs just like you who are building a business, making the world a healthier place, and designing a first-class life. I'm your host, Kim Foster, MD and certified business coach, and I'm on a mission to help you up-level your strategy and raise your mindset so you can truly thrive and grow your business. Let's get started. Well, hello there, and welcome to today's episode. Now, today we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome. And this term is not a new thing, but I've noticed more and more people are talking about imposter syndrome recently, which is really great. It can be a major problem for many of us. And the good news is that once you start talking about it and once the awareness is out there, that there are definitely ways to conquer it. So what about you? Do you feel like you're faking it? Do you feel like you're a fraud and that everybody is about to find out the truth about you? That is the feeling of imposter syndrome, and it's what we're going to tackle in today's podcast episode. So if imposter syndrome is something that you struggle with, then stay tuned. I've noticed a lot of coaches in general struggle with imposter syndrome, especially new coaches, and it can really hold you back from achieving your full potential. So today I've got four tips for how to overcome imposter syndrome. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about what imposter syndrome is. Now, according to Psychology Today, the definition that they give is Imposter syndrome is a psychological term referring to a pattern of behavior where people doubt their accomplishments and have a persistent, often internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. So if this sounds familiar, then imposter syndrome very well may be something that you have struggled with too. Basically, it's when you have a story or a belief about why you've achieved what you have, and that belief is it's based in, you know, that you don't actually perhaps deserve it or that you didn't really achieve whatever it was that you have achieved. It's always rooted in self-doubt. Um, it's often a feeling of inadequacy. It can be very fear-based or related to shame in some way. It often makes you feel like you don't deserve the things that you have achieved or accomplished and really makes you feel like you're unworthy. And trust me, this is a very common experience. I had a pretty bad case of imposter syndrome in my very early years of finishing all my medical training. When I first became a doctor, I had a persistent thought that somebody was going to come along and say, sorry, we've made a terrible mistake. We didn't mean to grant you that MD and we're going to need that back now. (laughs) It was very uncomfortable, particularly when you're in a position where it's important that people have confidence in your knowledge and skills. It's really hard to function in a way that inspires confidence when there's a part of you that has a persistent belief that it isn't actually true, as irrational as that feeling is. You know, obviously, I realized that I did actually earn the degree and that I was a licensed physician, but there was just just always this part of me that just somehow couldn't quite believe it or couldn't quite adopt that um, identity with confidence. I would have to constantly remind myself and reassure myself that it was real, that I didn't imagine all those years of study and training that they actually happened. I learned, I graduated, and I was a licensed physician. I think it's why I was sensitive to people's reaction when they would comment on how young I looked uh, when I would see them in medical visits. I did look young for my age, and truthfully, I was actually young. I finished all of my training um, by the time I was 28, and I was a fully licensed family physician at that age, but I did look several younger, several years younger than that as people could just not help themselves saying to me. And this absolutely triggered my imposter syndrome for sure, because I felt like what they were saying was, you can't possibly be the doctor here, you're way too young, or could you please call in the actual doctor? little girl, stop playing pretend. 
Now, they, of course, may not have been meaning anything at all along those lines. Probably they thought that they were complimenting me about how young I looked, but that was the story that I was telling myself that they were thinking when they would comment on my age. And it made it really hard for me to get out of that imposter syndrome mindset when I was being reminded of it so often. So the point is, I totally feel you if you have struggled with imposter syndrome or if you're struggling with it right now. But no worries, I have some solutions and some ways to overcome it, so let's get into that. So tip number one is to get perspective. Now, what I mean by this is that it can be very helpful to know that many people, famous people, and highly respected people have publicly admitted that they have imposter syndrome. And of course, those of us who experience the discomfort of imposter syndrome, we feel like we are the only ones who ever feel this way, but the opposite is actually true. There really is a very good chance that other people in the room at your meeting or your social event or the conference you're attending, there's a good chance that many, many other people feel the exact same way. Um, And many famous people have, like I said, been quite open about describing the fact that they have struggled with imposter syndrome. For example, Michelle Pfeiffer, she is quoted as saying, I still think that people will find out I'm really not very talented. I'm not very good. It's all been a big sham. And the former director general of the World Health Organization, Dr. Margaret Chan, she said, there are an awful lot of people out there who think I'm an expert. How do these people believe all this about me? I'm so aware of all the things I don't know. And like I said, I have suffered imposter syndrome myself, so I definitely know how this feels. I do think it's helpful to constantly remind yourself that many, many other people feel this way, and it really helps to put that in perspective. I've found that keeping in mind that so many other people have struggled with the same thing, it really, it just helps you not feel so alone in this. So that's tip number one is to really remind yourself that you're not alone in this and just to get some perspective. Okay. Tip number two is to focus on the benefits of being a novice. Now this is another strategy for conquering imposter syndrome. It's to recognize the benefits of being a a novice. Now, this is not something that we often think about, but the truth is there can be a distinct advantage to being new in your particular field. And that's because a novice or somebody new to a field has fresh eyes and fresh perspective and may think of things in a way that somebody who has been in a given industry or sector for a long time just may not think of. So you may be a new wellness coach, but if you've just completed your training, you've had access to the most recent information and the most recent research and the new findings, which can be a definite advantage over somebody who has been doing things the same old way for a long time. This is really a reframe for when you're new at something and it looks at this stage as being an advantage, not a disadvantage. So I want you to try this reframe on for size. I want you to see how it feels the next time you've got those rising self-doubts because you are new at something. All right, now tip number three is to focus on learning versus performing. So what I mean by this is to focus more on what you're actually learning than how you're actually doing at it, like how you're performing. This is known as a learning mindset versus a performance mindset. So with a performance mindset, you're only focusing on how you're doing at something and how well you're performing at something, which is a really uncomfortable place to be and puts a ton of pressure on perfection and really only allows you to use the metric of your performance to give you validation and those positive feelings about something. When all you're focusing on is your performance and how well you're doing, you're going to tend to see the mistakes that you've been making as evidence of your underlying limitations and that only fuels your imposter syndrome. But if you can cultivate a learning mindset, you'll begin to see any mistakes that you may make are just an inevitable part of the learning process. They are an opportunity for growth rather than just more evidence of your failing. So focus on the benefits of learning, on the learning process, on being on the journey and enjoying the process instead of constantly evaluating your performance. Finally, tip number four is 
practicing healthy coping skills. This can definitely help to cool those overwhelming feelings that often come with imposter syndrome. I'm talking about seeking emotional support from your network or exercising regularly and perhaps practicing mindfulness, making sure that you're getting enough sleep and all of those kinds of strategies that support your mental and emotional well-being. Meditation may be a particularly helpful strategy for you. I personally am a big fan of meditation um, and there are plenty of meditation apps on the market to make it really easy. My favorite one is Breathe by Lynn Goldberg. I'll link it in the show notes. Um, But there are many, many others. Uh, You don't have to use an app. Of course, you can certainly just meditate, like which is a really simple old school kind of meditation. But there are lots of tools to help you if you are new to um, the practice of meditation. Um, And one of the other strategies that I mentioned, which is leaning on your support support network. If you think that you need more of that, you might be interested in joining my Facebook group called Health Coach Squad. This is my growing online community, and we are a tribe of very friendly, very supportive health coaches and wellness entrepreneurs, and we share information and tips and do challenges to grow our business. Um, I'm in there doing live video every so often. I try to do that once a week or so, and just generally, we lift each other up in there. So if that sounds interesting, to you, then we would love to have you. I will put a link to that in um, to that group in the show notes also. Okay, so there you have it. Those are a few strategies for helping you to overcome imposter syndrome. I hope that you've enjoyed listening to this topic, and I just want to thank you so much for being a listener of this podcast. And as you know, this is a pretty new venture for me, and I just love the privilege of being with you every week. It is really fun for me, and I so appreciate you. Okay, until next time, have an amazing week. Bye for now.